looks like we're live. So welcome everybody to a, another webinar from Digital Lab. Uh, we are super excited to have Marcellus with us from uh, AdDynamo slash Spotify. Um, to be honest, <laughs> I generally just uh, tell everybody it's from Spotify because it's easier that way. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we have lots of good, uh, great discussions around um, Spotify and uh, what they're doing all the time. And it's uh, also really great uh, recently just catching up now around uh, um, his recent trip to Nigeria and the work that they're doing there. It's really fantastic to always find out what these ad businesses are doing to uh, push digital into Africa. It's really uh, great to have you here, have you with us, Marcellus. Thanks for making the trip out. Cool. Thank you so much for having me. Hello to everybody who is online. Uh, really excited to share a little bit with you today of kind of what we do and what our world looks like. And yeah, thanks for the opportunity, uh, Mike, for, for to have me. Absolute pleasure, man. So uh, before we dive in, uh, we like to give, uh, we often have some new people in the in the room. And so I can see a couple of new people in the room. Thanks to all those that are constantly uh, jumping back into these sessions. We can see a couple of you guys there. Um, how's it to all those uh, new uh, repeats and thanks for always supporting the work that we do here. Um, but we uh, do want to just give those that are new here just a bit of an introduction around who we are and why we do these things. So the main thing that we try to do with these webinars is to keep people informed about what's taking place in the digital space. So we work with our partners like AdDynamo and others to um, educate and to keep people informed around trends, new things that are taking place, um, but also to really help you try and position them in your digital arsenal or your toolkit. Um, I, it's, it's my belief that there are so many things that you can do, but the challenge is working out where they fit. And so um, that, that's really what we're trying to do with these. And we run them, uh, we run sort of a series of webinars every, uh, every quarter, uh, anywhere between sort of six to 10 uh, webinars at a time. And then we uh, put them out in batches like this, and we deal with uh, webinars across digital in sales and in marketing uh, to equip people in these. So we'll let you know after this around uh, some of the others that have gone out. Some of you uh, were we shared a whole batch of article uh, um, webinars with you for this last um, quarter, and you've uh, already signed up for a bunch. So thanks a ton for your support on that one. What I am going to do now is just share a quick intro. Um, video with you um, just around Digital Lab because it always feels very strange telling you all about us. It's much easier to, uh, to, to share a video. So here we go. People, what remarkably extraordinary creatures we are. We can feel the full spectrum of emotions in one day. We have the potential to make things beautiful and stand strong for what we believe in. We're passionate, curious about the unknown. We evolve and reinvent ourselves. Driven by the desire to connect, we've built a digital world. The Global Village brought people closer together than ever before, offering a new environment to do business on. But what does it take to survive in this world? Simply put, you need to understand the person on the other side of the phone, as well as the phone itself, creating a unique middle point where people and technology meet. That's where you'll find DigitLab. Through technology, we find ways to make people's lives better and thrive on challenging what's possible. Coming from different backgrounds, our team brings fresh perspective and dynamic thinking. With us, you get a partner that's just as invested in your success as you are. Sure, you could do things the way you have been, but we've got a feeling that doesn't sit well with you, just like it doesn't sit well with us. So, let's stop calling things impossible and start making history. That's a little bit about Digital Lab and why we, why we exist and why we do what we do. 
Um, just to give you an idea of kind of why webinars and where we're at, we really are a business that has a vision for global, uh, not quite domination, but really influence. And so um, we've got Natasha sitting in the background. She's based in Durban. I'm sitting in Cape Town at the moment at one of our other uh, partner offices in Paul. Um, Marcellus is sitting in Joburg, and we've had uh, webinars with people all over the world. Um, we really do want to bring and make the world a smaller place so that we can really learn and grow together. And um, if you're trying to get, uh, this is one of our projects that we have on at the go at the moment. Tash is going to just drop you a link to the survey that's taking place. This is the state of digital. Uh, we're doing this as a project uh, with the Digital Marketing Conference. Um, so they have very kindly put a 40% discount on their conference that's taking place now in November, end of November. It's the Digital Marketing Conference in Cape Town at the ICC. So if you do complete the survey, you will get 40% off on their tickets um, on that. So you can just hit that little call to action um, on that and, and take the survey. 16 questions that could uh, get you some really good ticket prices. Um, but more than that, what it is really about is just understanding businesses and where they're actually at in their digital space and to really understand your maturity in that space. And what will take place is we will then send you a copy of the report for free. It will retail at 4,000 Rand as a research report after it's done. We also have trend reports coming everywhere from uh, the CEO of uh, YouTube and uh, a couple of music outlets, as well as uh, some big reports coming from uh, partners like YouTube, Spotify. Um, the uh, Marcellus is going to be one of our writers as well. And we have some good trend experts and futurists that are also going to be sharing insight into 2024 and future of digital marketing. So it's going to be a powerful, powerful report. We're looking forward to releasing it at the end of November as well. So take part in that survey and get yourself a copy of that. Um, so that's the state of digital uh, report. We're very excited about presenting that to the market in, in just over two months. Uh, nothing like a deadline to get you excited about something. So a little bit about Digital Lab. We're here to champion your digital growth, and we're really here to just empower you to do that. I'm not going to read this slide to you. You will get this um, uh, afterwards, and you can take a read through this. But really, that's what we're here to do is equip you. We believe in this digital journey, how your customers are attracted to your business, how you engage them, and how you delight them. This is what we do every day, and we help people do this. Um, this is what we live and breathe, and we do this with the back of data. Um, and that's our game. So if you want to know more, we've helped a bunch of people and we do this for companies all over the world. So without further ado, I'm going to keep quiet and I'm going to let Marcellus take over and tell us more about what we're really here for, which is Spotify, what we can really be thinking about for summer. I'm super excited about this. Spotify is one of those platforms that for me has huge opportunity because that what they've been able to do is blend this balance of podcasting and uh, what I would term intelligent conversation with, uh, with music. Um, and uh, it brings us to a place where we can really find these unique audiences um, and market ourselves into a space where, um, where I think we can find audiences that we don't ordinarily find. It also allows us to be able to present ourselves in ways that uh, we don't ordinarily present ourselves in. The way in which Spotify allows brands to connect is really, really cool. And um, I'll let Marcellus take over from there and, and explain more. Those who are, who are new to Spotify will really find this interesting. And those that are not new to Spotify, I think will find this interesting in the sense of really just being able to get an expanse of how brands have been engaging in this space. And I do think that one of the biggest challenges that we face as brands right now is that our typical platforms of the meta and the Googles are becoming less and less effective as they get hammered by poppy data and all of these controls that they've lent on so hard to give us the kinds of controls and, uh, and quality uh, sort of targeting functions that they've had in the past. As those become less effective, we actually need to find better ways um, and new ways of being able to find our audiences. And so that's why we've been running webinars on these more um, bespoke platforms like Spotify. So without further ado, Marcellus, I'm gonna let you take over. 
Cool. Thank you so much, Mike. What an introduction that was. I think I'm going to just screen record that and play that at the start of every meeting that we go into. So I'm going to have a little technical. Ah, there we go. So now my presentation is now full screen and let me hit play so that you don't all see my notes. I've lost sight of all of you, so I'm just going to carry on. Mike, can you see everything? Is everything clear from there and you can hear me all right? Cool. Uh, all right, perfect, cool. So um, as Mike mentioned, um, I am from uh, Ad Dynamo by Aleph. Um, it's a lot easier sometimes to just say that we are from Spotify, but um, the great thing about um, being uh, from Ad Dynamo is that we work in, uh, in an office that represents a lot more brands than just Spotify. And I'm sure you've heard from some of them before, those of you that have been on these um, links before. I know Snapchat have done, have done, an, have done a, a, a sort of a presentation and I know that X have done a presentation, X previously known as Twitter. It's, it's a lot for us to all get used to. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's really something when you're in a meeting to keep telling people, hey, it's X now. It's also caused confusion in the office. We call the team the X-Men and we call the lady who heads it up Professor X. But it's great fun. And, and so as, as, a, as a part of that Dynamo by Left, we're exposed to so many of these different amazing platforms. And so for today, I have the privilege of telling you all about um, Spotify and what we represent. So normally in this, this type of environment or in this sort of presentation, one of my uh, much younger, much better looking um, uh, 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 sales reps would be doing this presentation. Uh, but in the words of Sister Bettina, uh, in the meantime, you are stuck with me. So I'm going to take you through the presentation. And uh, so my name is Marcellus. I know what you're thinking. That's quite a name. I've been asking myself the same question to my parents. Uh, but yeah, so I'm originally from Zimbabwe, but I've moved to South Africa um, when I was about 20 years old. And I kind of got into this industry almost by accident and here I am and I absolutely love it and I'm the Spotify lead. Um, I look after um, the whole of the sub-Saharan Africa region, South Africa, Nigeria, Kenya, Uganda, Ghana, Tanzania. Um, as Mike mentioned, I spent some time in, in, in Nigeria last week, uh, two weeks ago, which was just amazing, a, a great place to be in. And uh, just an incredible market. If you ever get the opportunity to go, take it um, with, with both hands. So today's playlist, and I must give a shout out to um, one of my team members who gave me this presentation. Uh, he even left his jokes in the, in the notes. So if, any, if I say anything funny, then you can attribute it to Shaston because I'm literally reading off his notes here. Um, so for today's playlist, I'm going to take you through kind of what it means to press play on Spotify. What does that look like? The different ad units that we have. And then we'll get into some fun stuff for some creative inspiration. So music is through the line of culture. It's capsule and it teaches us about language. It's how we celebrate. It influences fashion. It brings us together. And we're all so unique in terms of what music we listen to and how what our music interests are. I'm pretty sure if we went around to everybody on this webinar now, they would, we would all come up with a different music genre that we like, other than the fact that we all love Taylor Swift. I think we can probably across the board agree that we all love Taylor Swift. And don't at me, I will fight you um, on, the, on that one. But Music really does define culture, doesn't it? I think if you look back at what music's represented politically sometimes, and uh, and 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 it's you know it's defined eras and sporting events, and we associate music with all of these things, which is why Spotify is such an amazing place to place your brand. And what does that mean from a South Africa perspective? We are obsessed with music. Music really is a part of our culture being South African. They did a survey and it said 75% of South Africans would describe themselves as music fanatics. I don't know who the other 25% are, but it is one of the highest percentages in the world. And I think, as I said, you know, music really is just a part of our everyday lives. 56% of people agree that audio is an escape from too much visual stimulation. Um, uh, whenever I'm in a presentation with my team, they always tell the story that People um, will often say, Yo, I need to watch less Netflix or, gee, I need to spend less time on Facebook and Instagram. You know, it's just it's overload. No one ever says, yeah, you know what, I need to listen to less music or less, less um, podcasts. Nobody says that, right? And that's what Spotify is. It's that it escape from the visual um, stimulation, whether it's music, whether it's podcasts, and even more excitingly now, audio books and that sort of thing. It's such an amazing space to be because people um, spend so much time on the app. And of course, audio follows us absolutely everywhere where we go, right? Focus at work. We've always got music on in the office. It's such a vibe. I love having music on when, I'm ha when we have family time at home around the braai. The kids always choose the playlist and all that sort of thing. Um, of course, 
chilling and sleeping, one of our most listened to um, genres is actually white noise. Um, you know, people will just have it on in the background. Working out, there's not even a point trying to go for a run unless you've got some music in your ears or you're at the gym on the treadmill or pushing the weights or whatever the case is. Gaming, this is, we're seeing such a, a growing community of gaming of gamers that are listening to Spotify while they're gaming. I do this myself when I play a lot of games where the music can get a bit monotonous. You can mute that and have your own music playing in the background. It's a great way to new experience for gaming and of course cooking. Um, you know the music tastes better when you've got a bit of music, a bit of music going and you're vibing and that sort of thing. So really, audio does follow us throughout the day. On there, we don't even have commuting to work. I'm pretty sure most of us um, have some sort of music or podcast that we listen to. So Spotify is the world's most popular streaming platform. You don't need to, you don't, you know, I don't need to try and prove that to you, but they are in 184 markets, 456 million active users, 274 million are on the free version. I found out the other day that Indonesia has 27 million free listeners on Spotify, which is quite a phenomenal number. But if we look at that from a South African context, we have an amazing community of free listeners um, on Spotify, 8.9 million um, listeners that are that you can target um, through uh, with advertising on the app. They spend on average 17 hours a week, um, and anyone that's good with quick maths will know that that's roughly two and a half hours a day that they spend on the app. So it really is a place where people are spending a lot of time, and there is a lot of people um, on on the Spotify app. Sorry, I also meant to mention that if you have any questions on anything that I'm raising, please pop them in the chat. I can't see. I'm busy looking at my notes, but we'll definitely have some time for Q&A at the end if you do have any questions. So, sorry, I should have said that uh, from the start. You can pop them in there. I know Natasha and Michael keep an eye on the on the, um, on the the chats, and if, the, if you need, anyone needs to interrupt, please go for it. Um, so, from a South African perspective, who is listening? Well, if we look at the age breakdown, 51, 50, 5% of our audience are aged between 18 and 34, which we know uh, traditionally is a very, very difficult age group to target, purely because the way they consume media is very different to the way I consumed media growing up. When I was growing up, and I'll give away my age here, you sat down in front of the TV, you waited for four o'clock, and that's when TV started. You had one channel, you watched what it was. By five o'clock, it was over. I was actually explaining this to my daughter the other day. She has to do a, a speech on what it was like in the old days, and I was the one who was chosen, so I'm super offended by that. Anyway, I had to try and explain to her, no, you only got cartoons for like an hour in the afternoon. The way this age group consumes media is they've grown up being consuming TV, what, what they watch, what they want to watch. They listen to what they want to listen to. So they consume media in a very, very different way to what sort of the older generation is. And I'm probably preaching to the choir because I'm pretty sure most people on this call fall within that 18 to 34 age group. How are they listening? Majority is on mobile phone. We know that. And there's a split between um, tablets and laptops. Again, headphones in. Most people are going to be listening with headphones. And then gaming consoles and smart TVs, as I mentioned earlier, we're seeing a growth in that in that um, in that audience, and that'll just get more and more. The more consoles become available, the more connectivity becomes available. So, don't rule out the gamers. There's definitely a really really big audience of that on Spotify. And you may think, well, it's the free version. So, do they really have any money to spend? Education levels show that almost 20% of Spotify are free listeners um, have a university or postgrad degree. So, if they, if they're not earning money now, this will be your target market in a few years' time. And 23% of Spotify ad, un, ad listeners are in the top third of household income. That means that they do have money to spend, and that's why this needs to be a place where your brand needs to immerse itself in and make sure that it's being that you, that you're being heard. So that means, from a targeting perspective, we know who they are, we know what they're listening to, and we know when and how they're listening. And that gives us incredible power in terms of being able to target the right person at the right time when they're in the right frame of mind. So let's get into some of the fun stuff and we'll talk about the different ad units and what that's going to look like for your brand on Spotify. So um, we have audio solutions, we have video solutions, and then we've got some really fun display stuff that I'll take you through um, as, as we go through the presentation. So first and foremost, Spotify is an audio first platform. We know that people are listening to music, people are listening to podcasts, people are listening to audiobooks, right? So we always make sure that we always recommend that with your campaign, you may want to have a visual element to it, but always make sure that you have 
audio. Um, our ads are unskippable, uh, so therefore you achieve 100% share of voice. It also is served with a clickable banner, so you can have a call to action and the person can click through to maybe a website to purchase or a place to register for tickets or to find out more information. So it really is one of um, a sort of a, a we, we believe what should be a part of every campaign that you run on Spotify. And a lot of people might think, oh, audio, it's difficult to produce the ads and that sort of thing. Boy, have I got a deal for you. Within the Ad Dynamo by Aleph um, group, we have an amazing team called Bangers and Mash, such a great name. Um, and they are currently rebranding to Silver, which is also an exciting thing that I'm sure um, Mike and Natasha will be told about and then definitely um, spend some time being introduced to the, the Silver team. But basically, they can give you the full solution. They can produce the audio ads. We've done some incredible, incredible Incredible ads for huge brands across the continent, the likes of Samsung, the likes of Netflix, that type of thing. And they produce ads that could be 3D ads, 8D ads, ASMR. I'll get into what all of those mean for you as a brand. But they really are extremely professional in what they do. And, and their work is of, is of the highest quality. And so we, we can give you that, that full solution to make sure that you've got audio ads produced. And we always say, like, with the audio ad, try and make sure... Try and talk to the actual audience that you're talking to. And, and you'll hear in this example that I'm going to run for Rain now, how they used the ad specifically for the Spotify audience. Take a listen. <coughs> hey, say it loud. <laughs> you know, there are 40 million songs on Spotify. 40 million. <laughs> That's a lot to get through. Luckily, with Rain Unlimited Off-Pick, Mm -hmm. You run out of songs long before you run out of data. Change the way you listen. Add Rain Unlimited of Click Data for only $250 a month. Only available at rain.co.za. Rain, your unlimited data network. Ah. Cool. So just a really cool way to kind of bring Spotify into the conversation to make sure that the ad is personalized for the audience that they're listening to. So next we've got video takeover. And what's great about video is that, again, unskippable so you have to watch the entire ad uh 30 seconds and it's full screen also with a clickable banner in um in in the ad unit which is which is fantastic um the great thing about video is we only serve this when the app is in view so if I've got my headphones on and my phone's on the table and I'm just listening, I'm not going to be served a video ad. Only when I'm actually engaging with the app, you know, in whatever shape or form, it will serve me a video ad, which is really, really cool. Just to know that it's not just like spray and pray. All right, well, we hope you saw our ad. We know that these ads are actually being watched because we're only serving them when the app is in view. Really, really powerful. Full screen. I'll show you an example now that just looks really, really amazing. Um, yeah, take a look. It's also, sorry, on, on this particular ad unit, um, our video ad units have one of the highest engagement rates of all of our ad units. And so, um, you know, people, when they visually see something, they naturally engage with it. So we also believe it's, it's important to keep this as a part of your... Uh, you don't need a fancy kitchen to be a gourmet. Just great ingredients. Artisan Markets has everything you need to make delicious, nutritious meals night after night. I love, I love that ad with the guy and he's wearing sort of like that very kind of uh, sort of the fedora hat and it's for an artisan market. Like if that, that was like the poster boy for that type of market, right? I could never pull that off in my life, but I'm pretty sure half of my team um, could definitely do that. Um, so we'll move on to, to overlays. And this is just a great kind of static visual um, for you to just uh, maximize your brand impact, I would say. So when people are coming back to, so that they've been out the app, they kind of come back in, they're presented with the um, mobile and desktop overlays. Yeah, you can use really, really strong visuals to how, you know, to, to kind of just bring your message again to life. Again, it's unskippable. After 30 seconds, there will be an arrow for you, an X for you to close the ad. And again, you can make it um, sort of take you through to, to, to an external page. And so uh, just another way to kind of enhance of what you're doing on Spotify to just keep the message going at all these great little touch points that we've got. So you drive your main with audio and video, but of course overlays can play a big part of that. We've also got homepage takeover. This is a, a great way to, to, um, to engage, to do uh, product launches, to do uh, ticket launches, to, to launch something on, on that particular day, or just be like, hey, today is Heritage Day. 
this is you know this is what 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 it can mean for you and uh, i'm going to sound like a like a super salesman now but boy have i got a deal for you because if you book now um you'll if you buy two homepage takeovers you get one for free if you buy three homepage takeovers you get two for free um and so i challenge you to find any special better than that uh in south africa at the moment so please uh take advantage of the special we're running it for the whole of quarter four if you've got sort of if you're brand has specific days that they want to focus they can take over that home page and they can also make it interactive you'll have a look now you can see how kind of the shoe moves with the mouse as the as it's going over and then of course it's got the clickable banner to take you through to buy the stan smiths uh forever and uh, you know i one would assume these shoes are out of this world um and uh, I, i'll have to check with my team they will know um they they they, they are the they are the go-between between, between modern culture and, and me being a bit of an old fogey. Um, so, so homepage takeover, really, really powerful for if you want to do launches and that type of thing. And then we've got leaderboard, which is just a very simple um, uh, sort of banner that runs at the bottom. Again, when the app is in view and just another, another touch point, another way that you're just constantly getting your message across without being invasive, right? They're still enjoying their journey on the app. And I think that's something to be said for the free version of the Spotify app is that it is a very good experience. Um, even though you're using the free version, you can still listen to as much music as you want. You can still download your podcasts. And so, um, so it, it really is a very good experience. They've got that balance really well between free and premium. So this is one of our best engaged ad units, which is sponsored sessions. Basically, what this means is you serve a video ad to the listener, and in return, they get 30 minutes of uninterrupted listening, um, which is a great way, a great way to create that brand love, right? People love getting stuff for free. And if you can give them 30 minutes of ad-free listening, it just creates that like that, that brand affinity, like, oh, these guys are giving me something. Um, and, and you can tailor the ad to talk to that 30 minutes. We've had quite a few brands that have said, you know, in less than 30 minutes, you can sign up. Or in less than 30 minutes, this will be delivered or your order will be ready or whatever the case might be. Um, and so, so kind of you, you think about that playing on that 30 minutes of, of, um, of ad-free listening in terms of tailoring your message for that. So sponsored sessions, great engagement rates. And let me quickly show you an example of what that looks like. So the user would be using the app. They would select workout. They would select their playlist and they'll hit shuffle, and that's when we'll, we'll serve that. Watch this short video to get 30 minutes of uninterrupted listening. The hardest part of working out is lacing them up. Go hard for the next 30 minutes. You won't regret it. Enjoy the next 30 minutes of uninterrupted listening. Cool. So that's just a really cool way of. Uh, of just giving you know giving the listener something back and it's it might seem like a small thing but uh, you know in the greater context of the campaign that you're running it's really really powerful and then we'll move on to i think what i think is kind of our, our crown jewel sort of our very very popular sponsored playlists and so um sponsored playlists is a great way to connect and align your brand with culture and maximize awareness for sure we give brands the opportunity to sponsor a playlist for either 14 or 28 days. And these are playlists that already exist on Spotify. They're curated by Spotify. So therefore, it's not like an overload of one particular artist. You know, it's not like one playlist of just Kanye West. This is, a, this is lots of different music that, and they're constantly updating these playlists. And these playlists have followers already, people that are already listening into these playlists. And I'll show you some of the numbers now that these playlists sort of uh, the listeners that they have is quite amazing. And so you take complete ownership of that playlist. All advertising media within that playlist, it belongs to one individual brand. Um, and, you know, and, and, and there's some really, really cool ones to choose from. The example on screen now is I'm a piano grooves. I'm a piano grooves is our most popular playlist by a long shot. If you know the story about I'm a Piano and its rise, not only in South Africa, but across the continent, it's amazing. And it's so great to see that Spotify have embraced that as a part of the culture. Um, and I think that credit to them, they've done that really well. If you look at this playlist that we can choose to sponsor, there's a lot of local flavor, which brands really love. People love to sponsor I'm a Piano. We've got Made in SA. That means you know that these people are passionate about South African brands. We've also got African Heat, which is another great one that you can, you can sponsor. But outside of that, we've got some amazing playlists. I'll read through a couple of them. Mood Booster, which is awesome. I love my 2000s R&B. That is, that is on repeat in um, when I'm in charge of the music in the office. Sorry for everybody else. 
top gaming tracks, like I mentioned, that's that's growing in popularity. Songs to sing in the shower. And I, I know Torres is on this on this call. I know that's his favorite playlist, I'm sure. And uh, things like Beast Mode. So it's a great way to to kind of align your brand with with possibly a message that, that you're getting across. And like I said, these playlists already have followers. We've then got Release Radar and Discover Weekly. These are two playlists that um, that are algorithmic playlists. So in other words, my Discover Weekly and my Release Radar is going to be very different to, to, to the next person's because it's those playlists are curated based on my listening habits for the past week. And so every sort of Monday or whenever it is, I would look into those and be like, oh, cool, this is a new music that I want to discover, or these are the latest releases that have come out. And the brand can take ownership of those, those individual playlists, very, very personalized. And it's a great way to connect your brand with a loyal fan base of listeners across their favorite playlists. So um, really, uh, sponsored playlists um, are, are such a great way to, to interact. I'll move on now to our API playlist generator. This is built by also a, team, a, a company that's a part of our group as well called um, Blue Robot, and we partner with them. And this is basically um, people will click out, interact with your ad, and they can then answer a couple of questions. And in return, they get a personalized playlist um, into their Spotify uh, library, which is really, really cool. So it'll say like, you know, what, what meme best describes you when you're hangry? And then what meme best describes you once you've eaten or which meme describes you best when you see your food coming? And based on your answers, it'll, it'll put together a little playlist for you of like 20, 30 songs. And that playlist will live in your library and the playlist can be branded to say like, um, you know, KFC Hunger Buster um, playlist or whatever the case is. And so really, really fun way of doing that. And I mean, that's just a silly example. There's lots of opportunities on this are endless so um really really something that i would encourage you to kind of think about kind of what that could look like for your brand um and then of course hey, who said you don't get nothing for nothing these days we've got branded profiles and this is basically the, your brand setting up a profile like they would on any social media network you can set one up on spotify and there you can have curated playlists like what's your summer playlist what do you you know what's your winter playlist oh valentine's day is coming up what's your favorite song in valentine's day whatever that might be you can have an actual your brand can have a profile and then we've got some spend um if you put certain spend behind a campaign we can verify that profile for you and get that um, all important blue tick that everybody loves so much and we can get your 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 brand um your branded profile verified and we can use people to push people from your ad to the branded profile if you're wanting them to kind of engage with those playlists and listen to them and there's lots of really fun stuff that we can do there so those are the ad units that we have um, within our arsenal here at spotify and so i'm going to go on to some creative inspiration this first one is one of my absolute favorites i'm sure there's lots of pet lovers on i'm um, listening on here people you know people love dogs people love cats I'm a, I wasn't a, I wasn't really a pet person until I met my wife and then she convinced me to get a cat. Then we got two cats and now I love the cats. And so, yeah, I'm a, a pet person, but have a look at this great little case study uh, that was done over in the UK. Anxiety is a fact of life, even for your dog, boredom, stress, being left alone, but pet lovers at Frontline know that pests aren't a dog's only problem. So we thought, if humans listen to music and podcasts to de-stress, maybe dogs would too. And we're pretty sure our furry friends love a good playlist just as much as we do. So we introduced If Dogs Could Talk, Frontline's first direct-to-dog ad campaign. First, a takeover of a Spotify original podcast made just for dogs. Everything in this podcast is dog-friendly, even the ad breaks. We know what you're thinking. What does an ad break for dogs actually sound like? Well, something like this. <laughs> then, a stress-busting playlist annotated with spoken messages. Yep, yeah, just for dogs. Just gently bring your tail back slowly into downward dog. Become one with the floor. Finally, a way to get the humans to our podcast and playlist for dogs. For that part, we did something we'd never done before. We created Spotify ads that began with a tone only dogs could hear. Take a listen. If you thought the first 15 seconds of this ad were silent, you're almost definitely not a dog. 
If Potter Could Talk was a hit with listeners across species. On average, each listener spent nearly an hour streaming the playlist. The campaign won the hearts and loyalty of pet owners across the UK. And no matter how rough their day is, Spotify and Frontline have a calming experience for man's... Sorry, everyone's best friend. I love that example. It's so cute because I think it's so relatable. At some point, you you know, you've had a dog sort of involved in your life. And I think that that's such a clever way of using the platform um, to, to kind of get the message across. But I'm going to show you something with a little bit more of a South African feel. And we and this was done for uh, the new Nissan Navara when it when it launched. It was nominated for a whole bunch of awards. It was really, really cool. And uh, and yeah, let's I'll, I'll, I'll let the the the. Example. South Africa is one of the world's most culturally diverse countries, with 35 languages and 11 official languages. We have a lot of tastes, especially when it comes to music. How do you choose the perfect music track for the new Miss and Navarra? By choosing all of them. Introduce it. Made with your playlist. We took a Nissan Navara and tossed it through every bit of challenging terrain we could find to create a series of high-performance sequences. We then used different editing techniques designed to work with specific beats per minute. By rounding off tempo variations, we managed to cover, well, pretty much every musical genre in existence with just four edits. We then partnered with people who know music better than anyone. When our audience arrived on our platform, they were greeted with a Nissan Navara film, but with no soundtrack. Using Spotify streaming intelligence and marketing tools, we scanned users' most loved songs and matched them to the beats per minute and visual pace of the correct edit in real time, giving people their very own unique experience. Let's get down, let's get down to business. By using all these incredibly diverse music tastes to our advantage, Nissan was able to target and utilize our audience's favorite tracks to create a highly personalized and engaging experience. A car so intelligent that it knows how to pick the ultimate soundtrack. Yours. Oh, I love that example. I think it's so, so cool. And what a clever, clever way um, just to, to make use of, of music and align it with um, such an amazing, amazing car. It really is cool. The last example that I'm going to show you um, is, is, is one that we did for Adidas. So you can have a look uh, at this one. When the sun goes down, who do you become? Spotify listeners around the world come alive at night from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Users are more likely to switch up genres, tempos, and moods. Runners need to adjust to the dark, too. That's why Adidas created the Night Jogger, a retro-inspired running shoe with reflective detail. By day, it's one look. By night, it's another. Taking a nod from the Night Jogger, we teamed up with Adidas to show listeners in Germany and the U.S. exactly how their soundtrack moves from day to night. Fitness enthusiasts were invited to a custom Adidas microsite with a built-in Spotify integration, revealing how music fans soundtrack their nights in the world's most creative capitals. We then invited them to check out their own night score, personalized breakdown of each individual's nighttime listening trends. From there, yeah. listeners could explore their nocturnal side, including the genres, artists, and beats that get the most plays after dark, along with other signals like energy, tempo and mood and find their nighttime vibe finishing with a playlist of tracks they play most from dusk to dawn so how did night score score good question overall the experience delivered 32.4 million impressions with over 9 million unique users reached helping adidas drive hype and bring the night jogger to a new generation of listeners who never hit balls because the difference in their soundtrack is literally day and night by am you're one thing by Pia, find out who you become. That's really, really cool. And I think Spotify have done that so well in using the music intelligence to kind of 
connect people and that type of thing, sort of similar um, people with similar interests. So we're almost done. I promise you I'm going to go through these quite quickly because I obviously am uh, cognizant of time and I've got through most of our, our things. So just some of our tools is obviously playlists um, that are, are, are curated um, for and by you. Obviously, there's just loads of different playlists. I think there's over like 4 billion playlists on Spotify. Um, and so it's a great way for us to kind of tell a little bit about the user, know what kind of moment they're in the mood, what is their mindset. And so playlists tell us a lot about the actual users. And then, of course, we've got audio innovation. And 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 this is what I mentioned earlier with regards to, to Bangers & Mash or Salva, as they'll become known soon. They can produce these ads for you. We've got some amazing 3D, 8D, ASMR, our ads. Um, I will share all of these examples in this presentation will be shared with you that are listening and will be available. Please put your headphones in, have a listen to some of these. Um, if you don't know what 8D audio is, it's kind of audio that just seems to move all around you and 3D audio uses the left and right. And we've seen brands so cleverly do that. And I think the idea is to try and produce an ad that doesn't sound like an ad, right? Um, and the same which can be done with ASMR. It uses those very high tactile sounds like, a, like sort of somebody whispering or something being opened or whatever the case might be. So we've really got some great examples that we'd love to kind of share with you and, um, and that sort of thing. I'm not going to, uh, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm cognizant of time, so I'm not going to go through all the examples that we have, but we'd love to be able to, to, to share some of those with you. We've also got, obviously, with our video ad units, is, is the sound is always on, right? So there's no need for subtitles. You reach 100% share of voice very, very high viewability purely because we only serve when the app is in view. So, uh, you know, I just wanted to kind of reiterate that. And then finally, I'm going to touch on is podcasts. And we've seen an explosion of podcasts over the last couple of years. I think 2020, when we were all so told to stay at home, I think a podcast was an escape for a lot of people, right? And, uh, and we've seen that. And what we're able to do at Spotify is we can't target specific podcasts. So you can't say to me, look, I want to, you know, I want to target just um, um, uh, the Mac G show, for example. But you can target people that listen to that genre of podcasting or any of these genres that you can see up here. Rather worryingly, the most uh, listened to genre of podcast in South Africa is true crime, especially amongst women. So that's comforting for us men as we sleep at night. Um, but it is amazing that, um, you know, it's such a it's such a listen to genre. But there's all of these. You can target people who listen to comedy, who listen to education, sport, food, those types of things to make sure that your, your messaging is even more targeted. Um, and so podcast targeting is available. As I mentioned, not the actual podcast, but rather the people that listen to that genre of, of, of podcasting. And with one minute to go, your audience is listening. So it's definitely the time to press, press play on Spotify. So thank you so, so much for listening to me and uh, my terrible jokes. Um, and I really hope that I've just been able to kind of enlighten you a little bit as to what, um, what Spotify is and the opportunity um, sort of for your brand. So yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much all uh, from me. Uh, are there any questions uh, in the chat? I see there are a few. Uh, let me just see if there's anything here that needs to be answered. Um, cool. Yeah, so there's, there's quite a few things, and Daniel is in your chat as well, and he's and okay. uh, so, so they've been ans answering some of the um, oh, cool. technical um, along the way for you as well. Um, oh, sure. there's, there's one there that I would like to tackle um, that, that I think – um, it would be quite interesting um, to chat about, and that is um, Spotify versus YouTube. Um, mm. So, uh, right at the beginning, you mentioned that Spotify was the um, was the, the biggest music listening application. Mm. And there's a question around um, bigger than YouTube. Um, are you are you referring to primarily against YouTube from a music playback or a, as a media? Because the way that I understand it as YouTube is still the sort of second largest trafficked website globally. Yeah, look, I'm specifically talking audio and music, you know. Um, I mean, obviously, You're YouTube has it. YouTube music application. Yes, correct. Yeah, 100%, 100%. So, yeah, I mean, you know, to take on YouTube from a visual perspective would, <laughs> would take some doing. But, yeah, from an audio perspective, from a, a music perspective, absolutely, you know, Spotify. And I think the reason for that, Mike, is it's, def is it's um, the intelligence behind 
like if you push play on one song, the rest of your day is sorted. It'll it'll play music in that <laughs> it makes it extremely popular. And I think the way that they do that and the way that they're constantly updating that and working on that makes is is really what sets Spotify apart from the competition. But yeah, I was referencing purely from an audio perspective. Yeah, and then what what it looks like Spotify's um, sort of content um, uh, sort of strategy is very much around uh, like they've. They, their primary content strategy is obviously music, and then um, and then podcasting. Like they're they're investing heavily into that uh, that space. Mm. Um, whereas if I if I look at say an Apple Music or a, a YouTube, um, they're looking at more sort of uh, music experiences, concerts, uh, that sort of side of things. Um, it doesn't look like Spotify is trying to create those kind of uh, music style concert experiences is that is that right or are we missing something i think so i mean i think they, they you know they obviously don't want to try and do too much at, at the same time and i think their main focus has always been music and obviously podcasts <laughs> is huge. and i think if you look at some of the exclusives that they've got you know love him i hate him you look at joe rogan you look at we've signed a, a deal with like trevor noah so it, it really is like when it comes to podcasts, like it's the place to kind of get your podcasts. And I think the other apps are obviously trying to, you know, be as diversified as, 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 as you can. But um, we have an amazing brand strategy team here at Ad Dynamo, and they, they always in our Monday morning meetings share some really interesting insights. And I think um, Fashion shared something the other day around um, audiobooks, which is also starting to become more of a thing. So I think they are focusing more on from an audio perspective, um, you know, because audiobooks is obviously something that's growing. You look at Audible, you, you know, all these types of things. And that's obviously a space that um, that they will be be, be moving into, um, which is which is really exciting exciting because it's it's making sure that it's it's still relevant they have obviously from an alive events perspective they have a really cool section on the when you search on the spotify app there's a section that says live events and it, do, it doesn't stream them but it shows you what live events are happening in your area so in other words it'll show you like locally stuff um and and that sort of thing yeah as as dan's just put in the chat there dan actually heads up our brand strat so thanks so much dan for covering some of these questions that you might <laughs> also been answering yeah ticket and merch sales is also a functionality of the app so you know i think they're trying to diversify without trying to do too much and in, in in too much of a time to make sure that they do it properly so yeah and tell me is there a difference between a podcast listener and a music listener is there uh, like do you find that you there's one or the other are they the same um do they, like yeah yeah, I think no. The two are, are the two aren't mutually exclusive. I think that um, I'm, you know, as I, as I said, the majority of us are music listeners. Um, I, there will be a small portion of people that just go there for their podcasts, right? Um, yeah. But I think majority of people will consume their audio on the app, and so it'll be podcasts for maybe the car, and then music for for sort of when they're at home. So those are definitely not two completely different audiences. We see a massive crossover, which is why we've allowed people to be able to target podcast listeners when they're on their musical journey yeah so that, that's where i was trying to get to like uh, i know when i first um heard about spotify i think mm. one of the things and i i actually remember having a conversation with you about it at the one point where it's like mm. i wanted to kind of like fine tune my my niche targeting onto like a particular podcast because i was mm. like i I can like pick a podcast specific to my audience and then like really hone in. But that's, that's almost not the sort of suggested uh, sort of targeting approach from a Spotify yeah. perspective, because the, the audience is uh, not, not uh, general is the wrong word, but it, 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 they're, they're maybe a bit more of an enigma. They, they, they don't, yeah. they're not just, that they're, they're not just there for the podcast yes. or they're not just there for a particular style yeah. of music or, or, or that sort of thing. There's a, yeah. they're, they're a bit more complicated than that. Yeah. And I, I think, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. No, you're hundred percent correct. <laughs> I think that, um, that, you know, that is why our targeting allows us to w all the data that we're gathering. And it's not on an individual person like this is my, but like you would fall into a bucket of people that listen to, you know, let's say entertainment podcasts, and then your genre of, you know, your favorite genre is like pop. And then if we put those targeting parameters in and, you know, age and all those sort of things, then the ad gets served to you, which I think there's great power in because you're making sure you're targeting the right people, right? It's not just spray and pray. It's, it's very, very specific as to who you're targeting.
So if, if, if you were, because um, when you work with your targeting features, you've got uh, sort of three tiers of um, niching down into your target, like your, your criteria of being able to target this, you have no, like your three tiers of first yep. tier being more general and, and then it gets further down in yes. your niche. Um, the, the approach seems to be to start more general um, in your, in your uh, uh, targeting approach and, and to actually uh, sort of step back from the niching down from the audience perspective, unless you've actually got a product that is so yep. specific to say a, a, an app that only works on a particular device as an example, yep. um, like that delivery. But if you're a brand that you, you would actually benefit from a more general audience targeting approach. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, that's that's very true. And I think sometimes we'll say to a lot of brands, particularly that want to drive awareness, um, you know, which is obviously <coughs> part of it, to say like, look, for your first for your first campaign, let's run a run of site sort of tier one targeting. And then when you, you know, in your next one, we can kind of maybe try and fine tune that. There will be natural ones that are it will have to have sort of age targeting. If you look at alcohol, um, they'll have to do an 18 and above. And, and there'll be other brands where it won't make sense to target someone that's younger than 18 or, you know, yeah. maybe even younger than 25, like, you know, whatever it might be. But you, you're 100% correct. Like if it's just to drive, a, we want to drive max awareness, then we say, look, just go with a run of sight. And then we look at the post campaign analysis and we'll say, look, this is where it performed well. These are the type of people that engage more with it. This is the age that was, you know, a target that, that sort of saw you add more. And from that, we can build the next campaign to be a little bit more specific to those people. Yeah. Okay. And then in my research, uh, sort of leading up to this presentation, I, um, what I found to be most fascinating about, um, about Spotify specifically um, and what I, um, what I think is an important conversation for brands to be aware of right now is mm. that your, um, th there is a huge um, challenge for uh, brands at the moment to know which media channels they can trust and which media channels are actually trusted by mm. the consumers because consumers, especially younger consumers, are quite savvy and have their yeah. own opinions about what channels are trusted and which ones are not. And so, and there are a whole pile of assumptions that are being made that these are the right channels. Um, mm. And like even in our um, state of digital report, some of the preliminary findings are quite interesting around where people choose to be and, and how they see those channels. Yeah. But one of the, one of the most interesting things that I've found was a research report that was done by Cantor about two years ago um, that uh, was a brand trust report on ad platforms by consumers in terms of how they trust reports on, uh, on a, um, sorry, how they trust brands. Sorry, let <laughs> me start that again. Um, it was the report was about which ad platforms those particular yep. customers trust the most. Okay. And Spotify came out top on a global level mm -hmm. above Amazon and above um, Google. And um, and so for me, when I look at this, I go, you know, there's a there there is a or a sense that brand associations into a Spotify platform. Uh, um, brings a trusted name, uh, a, a trusted sense in that advertising, yeah. and I think like even with some of the ways in which your uh, your advert examples have shown in the presentation, there's this trust association that comes into play. Um, audio brings that, video brings that. Um, I think that if you align the creative with the fact that you're on a trusted platform, I think there's so much that you can do. Um, if you if you compare that to say the not the millennial but the the sort of Gen Z alternative, which would be your TikTok, the majority of brands are left uh, to the devices of say a an influencer because we can't because the platform's not actually trusted. It's the influencer that we're lending the trust from, and there's less and less controls. Yet, yeah. what Spotify has done is build trust. Mm. In a inside an audience that 
like inherently doesn't trust tech, um, yeah. yeah true they're, they're quite skeptical yeah they're very skeptical a generation and so yeah. now you've got this massive monolith business that somehow yeah. has a serious amount of trust amongst consumers and so yeah. for me that's 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 a very unique standpoint um mm. in, in uh for for spotify to have been able to achieve so it's really interesting yeah. for us to, to be aware of that yeah yeah absolutely i think that is the case i think that first and foremost <laughs> people trust it and second of all people are loyal to spotify right like you yeah. know you want all the music in one place you don't want to have to go now you know look get stuff from three four different places and so the loyalty and the and and obviously the the trust within the app i think um they've done incredibly well to do that i think daniel ek has sort of that's kind of something that he's proud prided himself in in terms of building that that trust and building up that user base and and i mean yeah absolutely right like a, a brand that's affiliated with spotify you know our, our consumers will naturally have that kind of trust towards versus maybe some of the other platforms out there justified or non justified that's not really for me to say but people make their assumptions right and so it's yeah. like oh talk x y think x y and z or whatever instagram facebook whatever it might be um but it, it's you know it, it spotify it does come out really on top in terms of a, a trusted brand for sure yeah yeah the standard comment often is um oh, i don't want uh, no one likes ads in their music it's like mm. Yeah, but it's it's the number one trusted ad platform yeah. in the world. You know, yeah, exactly. so maybe, maybe they don't mind so much. Uh, you yeah. know, you're delivering music for free, um, which is a massive, massive thing. So yeah, um, so there's a there's a really interesting um, case uh, that's being made from a Spotify perspective, and they they're not delivering an ad platform; they're delivering a music platform to yeah, consumers. Exactly right. And, done is they've monetized it in such a way to deliver value back to the artist and so they've created an ecosystem and brands get to be a part of that ecosystem and that ecosystem supports an industry um yeah. and i think that that's that's what google is doing well with their youtube shorts um mm -hmm. and, and where they're supporting the actual um uh, content creator it's what tiktok is getting wrong um, and it's what Facebook has got wrong and Instagram has got wrong. They're not creating ecosystems that actually benefit the creators. And, yep. uh, and I think these platforms are getting it right. And so it's really great to see um, platforms that do this kind of thing. So I think brands should be supporting this in more ways. For sure. Um, one last shot. If you've got questions in the chat, uh, we've got two minutes left. <laughs> cool. I saw there was uh, there was a question around data limits. Um, yes, uh, I'm not really sure if that, in terms of the ad size, or in terms of like there is no data limit for the free app. So you can you, you can stream the app for as long as you want on free. Uh, there is no like okay, you've you've used up 25 gig. Um, I see Jackie is typing, so maybe she can clarify for us. But yeah, there is no data limit in terms of like how much a free listener can can use. Um, you know, you can just as long as you've got. Um, Oh, how how fast does your line have to be? Not that fast, actually. Um, my mum and dad ran a test for me. God bless them at their age. They ran a, a test just using um, just using their cell phone. They were traveling down to to the free state, and they went through a lot of areas where it was just three G. There was no LTE and absolutely no interruption whatsoever. So it actually doesn't use that much data either. So it really doesn't have to be like an uncapped line. Um, if you've got just a regular sort of data card, um, you could definitely you know you'll get some serious listening done on based on that i think in the main metropolitan areas there's definitely wi-fi that's available for most so yeah uh, i hope that answers your question jackie thank you so much and thanks for all the questions that came through i really appreciate that cool all right um we are done with our time and i think it's important to stay to that time frame hit those emojis and let us know if you enjoyed the session um, guys, it would be really great if you shared this and let people know how it went. Um, we will. We don't make all of our webinars available online. We will make this one available online and load it up onto YouTube uh, probably within the next day or so, and we'll send links uh, to that when we when we're done. Um, and uh, we'll also create a bit of uh, sort of short content that we'll share socially with some of the snippets. So you guys are welcome to uh, share that out and just spread the word. We are wanting to create more and more of this content, um, and so them and uh, kind of get it in front of more people. So. 
the more you, you help you can share. You can make contact with, uh, with myself, uh, touch base with me, and then I will connect you with the guys at Spotify, and we will uh, make this, uh, get you guys up and running in no time. So that is perfect, um, and uh, and yeah, in, in all seriousness, we're all ready to roll. The, the, both the Spotify team and Digital Lab are, have quite a slick process on this on this front, so we can yeah, get things to you pretty quickly. Um, and um, and between yeah, between uh, Bangers and Mash, Digital Lab, and and Spotify, there's uh, there's a pretty good content and production run. So summer is around the corner but it's we we everybody's ready and rolling so it's a good run it's a good roll and um and and also just spotify is part of the lf group so there are capabilities to um, extend a campaign idea into multiple channels into various different pieces so it yeah. doesn't have to be isolated into one environment um so yes um so that is uh, that's that on that run Please don't forget about the survey, um, and uh, we will have a, a sort of a finale web webinar right at the end of the year, which we'll invite you to around that. Um, awesome. but you take the survey and be a part of that. Marcellus, absolute pleasure having you on board. Thanks. Great to do these with you guys. Yeah, uh, sure. Thanks. I uh, know that it takes, it's no small feat preparing for these. <laughs> no, it's cool. Thank you so much for having me and thanks everybody for listening in. We're so excited for, for what, what's, what's come, what comes next on Spotify. So thank you. Take care, everyone. Have a great one. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Have a great, Cheers. what is it, Tuesday? Have a great Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> Thursday. Cheers, Bye.